What's up, everybody? It's your boy Skinny Moose, and I brought on Aunt Mickey, everybody's favorite. So, so you're Skinny Moose, and I, I'm Mickey Knuckles, but I used to be Moose Knuckles in TNA, so that's pretty funny. Yes, I actually looked that up the other night, and I was like, I. <laughs> so, uh, what made you a deathmatch wrestler or a wrestler in general? Um. What made me do it was uh, when I was in high school, uh, I didn't have a mom. Like my mom died when I was young and my dad, you know, wasn't involved in. I was supposed to, uh, I had a scholarship to go study music like opera over in, in Europe. But um, me being in a war to say I didn't really have a lot of money to go over and be able to do that. And I was offered because I backed where I wrestled at the time because I liked wrestling. I loved wrestling. Um, I was offered a chance to wrestle or trained to wrestle. Um, very much sold my soul to the devil to become a deathmatch wrestler. Now we know your trainer was, uh, I don't know if I should, should mention his name. Well, I can mention one of them as Chris Hero. And then <laughs> your other um, one. No, there was multiple. Chris Hero, Tracy Smothers, Blue Pain. Like at one point in time, I was training five days a week with five different trainers at the same school. Damn. But yeah. And your, your main two, correct me if I'm wrong, was Ian Rotten and uh, Chris Hero, if I'm not mistaken. That was your main two. And then, uh, you know, we, we will speak on Ian, but I'm going to try to keep that one as professional as I can, considering, you know, I know what Ian's done to a lot of people. So, uh, as, yeah, I guess. Is the XPW Championship the only belt that you have as of right now? Yes. Um, I've won a lot. Of, I've, I'm mo more so focused on tournaments in the last three years. Um, so, thankfully, you know, that, that's been going well. And then the XPW Championship was just like an icing on all my cakes. Was yes. just like, But I did um, uh, Survival of the Sickness in Colorado. I've done uh, – and I, and I won that one. Um, I did Tremont's Deathmatch Tournament, won that one, um, participated in TOD last two years and came in, like, went to the finals both years, which, whatever. And then uh, I'm going to get it. I'm, I swear I'm going to get it this year, though. I swear to God, if I don't, I'm quitting. If I don't, if I don't, let it be known. If I don't win TOD, I'm, I'm quitting. I'm out. I'm not doing this no more. Um, <laughs> um, and then uh, quite a few other things. So I've been more focused on trophies and tournaments this year uh, as opposed to belts. But yeah, it's it's it wasn't it was a nice I don't know I, I I felt like that was just like the little bit of an extra oomph I needed for all everything to culminate together. So it was really. Cool. So do you have the belt in front of you? I actually have the belt in my gear bag. I, <laughs> my uh, I took it to her house. So yeah, but it is in my gear bag. I was gonna say if you have it in front of you, let's say because you know how much Jimmy brought out the men's belt. I'm like. They always say that them belt, XPW belts are heavy. Oh, my God, it is. For such a little belt. Like, this belt's little. It wasn't for somebody of my figure, obviously. Um, <laughs> poor Le Dark kept trying to put it on me after I won. And she kept trying to, like, and I'm like, it's not going to work. For, for, like, at least a good four or five minutes, I felt. I was like, dude, this is, like, this is why people my size don't go shopping. Because we start trying on stuff and it's nothing fits. Like, just stop it. It's embarrassing. Just throw it over the shoulder. Just throw it over your shoulder. <laughs> So, but no, those belts, the, the metal on the the plates on them are so thick that they're really heavy belts. So they're good weapons. Yeah. So, um, what is your worst injury or your major one? I can name the one in your leg. We know that one for a fact after three months tournament. No, yeah, um, that one's fine. The the um, I don't have feeling my front of my knee anymore because. The way that the light tube broke and went in, there was two pieces. There was the initial I didn't even feel. And then the secondary piece pushed the initial down. And then, yeah. And then when I pulled the set, what the piece I pulled out of my leg was the secondary piece. The per first piece was still in my leg the whole time I was resting. And then I just duct taped it and just kept going. So, I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's a gnarly scar. It kind of looks like um, a Cheshire cat smile, you know, the way that it's angled. <laughs> Damn, if I didn't think that that tattoo would hurt that bad or even if that tattoo would take, because I highly doubt it would take on that skin because of how, how destroyed that skin is. I was like, yeah. I would get that tattoo right there. But um, <clears throat> the femur break, obviously, that, that set me back. Um, 
where I had to, I ended up wrestling with the, after it was broken, I got the initial surgery and then ended up continue to wrestle with a broken femur. Um, yeah. Surgery didn't heal it, but they told me I was healed, but somebody didn't do their job very well that day, I guess. And so I wrestled with it about six months with it broken still. Uh, with the un- There was like the inch and a half gap between the two pieces of bone with the rod holding it. So like I could put my toes on the mat and rotate my leg and I can feel the bottom half of my leg moving like differently. Like my top end like stay one way and the bottom half go the other way. And it was like I couldn't lift my leg, run or jump, but I was still doing matches and stuff. And I tagged in a match actually against the Hooligans with John Moxley and Sammy Callahan. I was like – you know, John's like, here, we're going to drink all this beer before we go out there. All of us were wasted that match. I'm like, okay. I'll get through this one out, so. Yeah, you, didn't you get, yeah, you uh, sliced your leg open in Tremont's tournament, and then you stepped off to the side, pulled a piece out, taped it up, and then, like, you pushed it on X, and then somebody, might have been Andy from the Death Match Elite, somebody posted about the, uh, fucking the doctor sitting there working on your leg and i'm like oh god oh god it was so so what happened was um i'm not a big fan of hospitals so i really try i you know i try to avoid going to a hospital if i can help it and i sent it back and Tremont's like you gotta go to hospital i'm like no and chrissy's like you're going to hospital i'm gonna beat your ass and chrissy's a little intimidating so i'm like okay fine i'll go um and i going to the hospital that they said that Tremont goes to all the time and they said i'd be in and out and I got in there and then they told me that they weren't a trauma hospital. So I needed to go to a different hospital and they wanted me to ride in an ambulance. And I said, I am not writing. I'm not spending $5,000 to go from point A when I drove myself here anyways. I was yeah. like, so you can either take it out. Cause they told me there was an di- initial glass down in my leg after they x-rayed it. I said, you can either take it out or I'm going to go home from Jersey to Kentucky. I'm going to go all the way home and just go to see a doctor tomorrow if I have to. They're like, you can't yeah. do that. Like, I got a pound of weed in my car. I can do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> the doctor started laughing. He's like, well, we can book an OR here if you want, but it's going to take up to eight hours to get one one available. And I was like, eh, I got stuff to do today. I got kids. I got jobs. I got things I have to do. I am an adult on yeah. during the week. And I was like, so it's either now or never. He's like, well, I can take it out here, but I'm not going to be able to state you. Like, so? He's like, so you'll let me really take it out of your leg? I said, if you'll let me videotape you. Doctor is super, super cool about it. And he, like, put his hand all the way up in there, and he had these, like, long freaking fingers, and he puts his middle finger into the hole and goes down, and he keeps, like, p- getting these pieces of glass out of there, and he goes all the way down to his knuckles on his on his hand right here. And he's, like, trying to get more. He's like, I think that's it. We irrigated it. We did this, that, the other. And I was like, you know what, Doc? I think you owe me dinner with this as violated and penetrated as I feel right now. I like... That's just, he, he just died laughing, but I sent him a picture. He, he wanted me to text him a picture of it, and I sent a picture when it healed. I was like, oh, we're all good, but they couldn't stitch it or nothing. So I had to, uh, with a, a wound like that, because it carved it out, like it carved out all the tissue and stuff and damaged the nerves and shit, but I had to pack it and let it heal from the inside out. So like the next weekend I was wrestling again with it. I was like, oh yeah, it's fine. I'll just put a pack of germ on it and it'll be fine. But yeah, good times. <laughs> oh shit. So you yeah. didn't get no, when no. I so- it's out of my leg and I saw it wasn't like squirt everywhere. I was like, all right, I don't think we cut any big, you know, artery. And then I was like, what would Sabu do? And then I remembered, you know, when he tore his fucking bicep open, he just fucking duct tape. I was like, who's that? Who's that? that? No hospitals today, but yeah. I mean, you could always play the, the necro butcher when he wrapped his arm up mid south and almost got his fucking arm cut off. Yep. I, was like, I mean, you didn't get no sedation or no. Jesus. You did a local anesthetic where they stick, like they try to numb around it and just started going to town. I was like, okay. Fuck me. I, um, honey, I'm a match wrestler. I got a really high pain tolerance and I'm an idiot. So it'll be all right. <laughs> So we were in this Airbnb this whole past weekend, right? From thir- I got there Thursday morning. I left Wednesday night after I got off work and drove straight through. Got up there Thursday morning to start the festivities. And 
since I got there, we would be sitting there and it would like be dead silent and we'd hear knocking at the door. Now, the way that this Airbnb was, was it had three set like flights of stairs that were super fucking steep and this narrow ass hallway. And then there were doors on like the floors when it evened out to go into the, these little apartments. And so we were up on third floor. It was a fucking ridiculous amount of steps, by the way. So there's no way for anybody to get in and out or to disappear or anything like that. No fucking way at all. I would go to look out the door and there'd be nobody there. And I shut the door and come back and sit in. So maybe like right on the door again. So I think maybe that ghost fell on me home. And that ghost is still in my rillos. They're going to have to start paying rent or something because these things, they add up with me. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Anyways. I feel that. All right. It's not going to be your normal review. We can ask questions, but I'm going to go off on tangents. That's just what I do. Sorry about that. My uncle, he's in, my great uncle's in the hospital, and uh, he's got a. They're just sending him down for emergency surgery, and he's got a 43 percent chance of making it. Man, my prayers are with you. <laughs> I've lost all of my aunts and uncles. I don't like ten of them. I've lost them all. I only got my mom's brother now, so like cancer, yeah. cancer's wife, family, including my grandmother. My grandmother had five types, and. It just fucking cleaned the slate of my family tree. Um, I had stomach cancer. Uh, my grandmother had, she started off with stomach, thymiomia. And then it went, fuck, I can't even tell how it went. Now it went uh, long, then it went skin, and then it went breast, and then it went up to our brain. But uh, was working for XPW something that you always wanted to do? If you're asking if it's something that I've always been. It's weird how you ask that because I don't actively seek out to make a goal. Like everybody makes a goal of like wanting to go overseas or things like that. I just want to work as many different places as possible with as many like-minded people as possible and xpw like the way how crude i am how crass my my character in ring um it's it's very much a brand that xpw fans are on board with <laughs> <laughs> it fit in with that um and and have a good time so i was always wanting to get a chance to be a part of that but as like I learned a long time ago dealing with certain promoters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see from the outside is not ever what you see, what you get on the inside. And so to be weary of certain things. So like I'll, I'll work different companies and, and fill it out. And if it works out great, if it doesn't work out, you know, you don't stay with it. You know, it's not, you don't have to try to be married to anybody. Um, yeah. So, but I mean, I have enjoyed my time at XBW. I haven't had a bad, moment at xbw on any show backstage like I've, I've been very lucky to i guess just have a good time i do that i have a good time at xbw and icw I have a great time you know when we did the the eat the turnbuckle thing this weekend which was crazy um yes. group yeah um that was insane <laughs> it was so much fun uh and then you know it, it i but yeah i i <laughs> A lot of companies get reputations and there's always going to be good and there's always going to be bad with every company. And but I've been fortunate, I guess, been for such a long time on the worst of situations that maybe this is my blessing on the back end of it. Of You know, ah, you suffered. Here's your here's your reward. So I, I have a good time there. I mean, I guess the reason why I wrote that question down was considering, you know, you, you come into it in like the early 2000s. I mean, you was in it before then. Uh -uh. No? The early 2000s? XBW last year. I mean, you come into, like, death matches wrestling and, like, the I got death match wrestling. It was towards the end of 2000. Like, it was 2006 and on. Yeah, so kind of still the... My first one against the, the NRI. Early, the early, you know, 2000s. And I thought maybe that you... You know, you was always wanting to lean towards the XPW if it was still around at that time. I remember Ian claims, you know, because the ECW product, Ian was 
So ECW yeah. didn't get along, but and I think that's I don't know. I mean, he never. Well, yeah, he did. He had shit talked to everybody. He does that all about anybody. But <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like yeah, it wasn't like I don't know. It really wasn't. Uh, I, and I didn't have this character back then. Uh, you got to think I was raised by a single mom in, in a country bunk town. Yeah. And, like well, I was, you know, pretty much sheltered from the outside world, and and then I jump into training at IWA, which is totally completely opposite. And here I am, fucking naive, gullible, eighteen-year-old girl, just you know, being sucked into the den, the wolf's den, not knowing what the fuck I'm doing there. But yeah, happy I didn't get eaten alive and shit out. So, as people. much as much as I love this character by you, I love the outer. When you first started, character, I love the the look. I love the way that you would always carry yourself. I mean, I like his character now, but you know, you don't see much of you don't see nobody like Aunt Mickey. No, well, I have no um, shame. So this is probably going to get me some hate, and um, I'll clip this part out. We used to speak on Mike Levy. When I sneak on Mike Levy. Yeah, like talk about him. I'll talk to you. I, what, I, know, I know that you had like problems with him. No, I had, I had no problems with him. I, I'd have, okay, so <laughs> we'll go ahead and talk about it because I'm writing a book. So there's going to be a lot of stuff in this book that people are like, oh yeah. Okay. So I had no problem with Mike. Never, never even knew the guy before the show. I had no fucking idea who he was. Mike Burns from Smart Mark Video told Ian that this guy was in the crowd because we had one too many girls caught for Queen of the Death because th for stupid ass reasons like, oh, I got my boob job last week or, oh, I got a new tattoo. You knew you were booked three, five months ago, whatever. Anyways, so we had one too many girls call out that year and Tank, you know, was like, well, why don't I wrestle Mickey since I had just wrestled him in King of the Death? Why not Rochambeau? And... Ian was going to do that. And then Mike Burns like, no, Mike Levy's here. Why don't we, you know, he's all over the internet. You know, he wrestles on the, on the East coast and the Virginia's area and stuff or Carolina's, whatever he said. And he said, he, he thinks that he should be on every single death match and stuff. So we, can make a good you know, get some more views. So he, you can always buy Ian with more views. So Ian's like, well, bring it back here. Let me talk to him. So at the time we changed <laughs> It to a round robin where I was normally a tournament's three rounds. I was working four rounds and I worked the day before on the King of the Death match show because it was a weekend. It was a King of the Death on Friday night and then Queen of the Death during the Saturday day and then King of the Death Saturday night in the alley or in the parking lot of this bowling alley. So, you know, it was, yeah. So, um, so he gets back there and I hear Ian talk to him, and he said, who were you trained by? And he says some names I didn't recognize, and, and Ian's like, okay. So I guess I assumed that he knew maybe who, who he was talking about. And then he said, do you know what a squash match is? And the guy, Mike, said, yeah. He said, basically, what we need from you, and he told him what we need. We, we need a match for Mickey to go through to the next round, look strong, da 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 um, Can you do this? He said, yeah. And so I talked to him a little bit before and said, is there anything you're not comfortable with? And da, 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 da. I was like, all right, well, thank you for everything. And we go out there. He, run, he runs his mouth on the microphone like he was supposed to. I come out like I'm supposed to. I go to start the match and I give, him, I give him a shot and he punches me in the face. And I went, OK, so I hit him back, punches me in the face. And I hear Ian off to the side screaming at me. You better fucking get him. It, and when this. There's a lot of things that y'all don't know about how like how things were handled behind IWA doors, especially when it came to me and matches like my my if I gained a little bit of weight, he would pull me off cards until I. Yeah, I'm always been a big girl. He would pull me off cards and tell me I was too fat and, and then tell other people I had a back injury or some shit. Or like if I did something wrong, I'd be hazed about it for the next you know week and a half. And it's just it's just things like that. And so him screaming at me, I was like trying to get in. So I've always done the the, the headbutts, but it's just yeah. like a bad thing. It's, it's widow's peak to widow's peak, you know? I mean, it's it's there, but it's it's fine. And uh, I gave him a headbutt. And I was like, what are you doing? And then he headbutts me in the eye. So I headbutt him again. He headbutts me in the eye. So I grab him and headbutt him. Well, he grabs me and keeps headbutting me in the eye. And you hear me on the tape say, stop, no, don't. And then I punched him in the mouth. 
proceeded out the rest of the match. I kept trying to give him things, and, and I was getting a little irritated, but I was trying to make the best of, of whatever this situation was, just to get through it and get to the next round. And the finish was supposed to be, I was supposed to just, like, throw him off the top through something. That was supposed to be the finish, like a flare bump through something. I didn't feel comfortable with the way that this barbed wire ladder worked. I was afraid he was going to hit it cronkite. So instead of throwing him, I actually did a belly to like a side belly to belly with him, like to push him around to carry him over. And when I landed, the barbed wire went into my thumb and, and poked out the other side. So I couldn't bend my thumb. And by that time, this had already started to swell so bad over my eye where it was causing vision issues and causing like really press, a lot of pressure. So I was trying to get in the back after the match to immediately go back there. Like there, it was just pain. And I get back there and they're taking this barbed wire out of my hand and everything else. And I'm getting this, you know, cut. And I keep hearing somebody come back and go, Mickey, you're needed ringside. And I was like, I'll be fine. You know, it's, it's, I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm dealing with something right now. And they kept coming back there. And while they're coming back there, I'm talking to the second girl now that I have to set something up with to coordinate because this girl doesn't really, because the girls that we were wrestling get, they don't normally do these types of matches. So now I have to coordinate because I'm the only one there that's done these type of matches because I was fortunate enough to have men to work with in these matches that I could carry that through to them. But I had to coordinate things, and, and to do that, you, you have to be, have communication. And so I'm trying to communicate with this one while getting the, the barbed wire in my hand while they're working on my eye. And as I'm talking to them, they're coming back there and screaming. They're like, da 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 And then Patty, Ian's wife, came back there, and she's like, Mickey, Ian's hollering for you ringside. So push everybody away. I go out there. By the time I get out there, he's laying on the ground and everybody's all around him. He's on the microphone. And I can't really because I got in my uh, ear box. So I hear like him screaming. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I get back there. Mike gets back there. I shake his hand. I go to talk to the other girl. Ian gets back there. Him and Mike go into the separate area because it was a big old bowling alley and they were talking. So I don't even know. Uh, Mike goes to the hotel, gets cleaned up. And then I, he comes back and watches King of the Death that night. And I was like, hey, how you feel? He's like, oh, I feel good. You stayed and watched King of the Death. But, um, I do remember Patty tried to give him his money back for the ticket. I do remember that because because the show was like for the queen. Ian really couldn't pay him anything because he was an issue and everything too. So I don't know if like there was a workout deal or whatever, but I did see her try. And he was like, no, don't even worry about it. And then he watched King of the Death that night and helped me clean up afterwards. So I bought him a beer. And then the, a couple days later, I get a call, phone call from the police department. And they're investigating it. And then two days after that, I get another one saying that they're they're dropping it because basically it, they didn't think I had done anything wrong. And I was like, all I did, I got punched in the face, so I punched them back. That's all I did. So <laughs> get me canceled, death threats. But and then, and then somebody tried to say that he was special needs. I was like, no, he was not special needs. Intel, whatever. But I, I find it odd that if he was special needs, why would he post? YouTube videos with another guy who's like a big guy, like 400, 500 pound guy laying on this dirty ass mattress telling people, telling Ian that he could save IWA by letting people pay him to sodomize me. So I, I yeah. So I'm like, eh, whatever. And you would think I was like, what? It'll, it'll pass. No, broke my leg. People sent me death. Death wishes told me they hope I got a boycott and died. They hope I never come back to wrestling. I was a pathetic piece of shit. And I still get it to this day. And I'm like, it's been almost 20 fucking years. I don't tell you all. He punched me in the face and punched the back. Nobody said anything when Necro fucking was decking the shit out of me or brain damage or any of the motherfuckers. I don't understand. I was always raised to, if you're uh, do unto others, do unto your death. You get as good as you get. You know, if you're going to hit me and you want to go for that, I'm going to do the same thing. I am sorry if that's not how you think it should be, but mama didn't raise no bitch. Uh, no. Mm -mm. I'm not getting my ass anymore. Mm. I'm so. sorry. You know, I don't really believe in a man hitting a woman, but when it comes to intergender deathmatch wrestling, that's a different fucking story, my buddy. Let me tell you about that. <sighs> when I was little, I'm going to tell you a life lesson. I was little. My, my mama was a single Catholic woman, mean as hell. My mama made me a deathmatch wrestler. What she has done to me in my childhood, she'd probably be locked up in federal prison today, okay? That's not saying much because things have changed so drastically, but my mom yeah. made me man. Psycho, crazy, unstable. <laughs> so when I was little, after my mom had gotten cancer, kids would pick on us. Me and my sisters a lot calling us cancer girls. Don't go near them. You'll get cancer. Da, da, da. Like just kids are evil. And the, the little boys kept picking on me, you know, one day 
I kept hitting the back of my chair. When I turned around to ask him to stop, he punched me in the mouth. And before I could hit him back, the teacher had separated us, took him down to the office. My mama was called. When I got home, I didn't know my mom was called, and I was trying to hide my fat lip. And when I got in, I started doing my chores. Mom comes up, and she goes, how was your day? He answered her question. She goes, anything happened? I said, no. Finally, she uh, I, she indicated that she already knew, and if I didn't tell her, she was going to beat my ass. So I told her and you know, about the fight. She said, did you hit him back? I said, no, ma'am. She said, I'm going to let you slide with this once. She's like, the next time you get in a fight, if you don't waylay on their asses, when you get home, I'm waylaying on yours. I was like, but mama, I thought little boys should hit little girls. She was like, they shouldn't. But you also have to keep in mind, if a woman steps up like a man, she deserves to get put down like one, too. So don't oh. ever think for those britches. And I've lived by that every day of my life. I that's think what that's my true. grandmother always said. She said she'd look at me. Don't you ever hit a woman? She said, but if a woman's going to provoke you and put the, her position in the way of a man, she said, that's a different story. Yep. I don't want my son to be no statistic. You know how much spousal abuse goes on where women beat the shit out of men and so tab <laughs> we're supposed to be this woke society, but nobody wants to believe that when a man hits back and the woman calls the cops that maybe, maybe that that instance was because a woman was beating the fuck out of him before he hit her. The first time I ever seen it, I was in well, I'm twenty four, I say I was about nineteen. And I seen a gr this girl I know beat the fuck out of her old man and I'm like and he, he wouldn't touch her back. He wouldn't do anything. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I thought my mom, my mom, she come, you know, she, I didn't have the best childhood. So I lived with my granny all my life. And my mom, you know, I'm like, wait a minute. I grew up, wait, wait, what the hell's going on here? My mom, my granny's like, my mom, my granny's like, yes, there's women that beat men. I'm like, wait, what? My wife's like, yeah, there's women that actually beat men. I'm like, how did I never know about this in my 19, 20 years? Because you're young. And I'm like, but hey, I, I got to admit, you fucking took your, you gave, you took it to curl. I watched that the other night. That's one, probably one of my favorite matches. And the only one that really defended you there was poor old Slack. Now, I, that boy will, that man will bring his fucking all. What are you talking about? What? Um, ICW is the mystery vortex. It was you, Cruel, Sadika. Yeah, that was, that was fun. I love Slack. Slack's fun. <laughs> you, I love him. I love hanging out with him. I love getting to hear him talk. I love getting to see his band play. He, I, I got to be a, or I went and, and was a part of Eat the Turnbuckle, and that was just awesome. Uh, like, if you watch it, it's, it's something unique and special i was really happy to be a part of the last one so when you and i don't mean this by disrespect but when you hit crow in the nuts and he just looks down at you like i'm like dude where the fuck do you get the man the mentality to just take that shit from i liked it there is those people yeah there are more, more of them every day then i get my inboxes full um seriously oh yeah there are several people in my inbox that want me to like want me to just, they don't want to have sex or nothing or some of them must be, i'm not saying they don't but anyways there's some that want me to torture them and beat the shit out of them and squeeze their balls until i make them bust in my hand like 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 just squish the ball sack and i'm like ow like you're not supposed to you're not supposed to hurt those bro you're supposed to love those and where does this come from you know but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna kink shame. I'm not there's no nope. kink shame in this game. <laughs> I'm okay with whatever you want to do, but I just teach their own. But I get a lot of people. I get a lot of people who have mommy issues in my inboxes. That's fine. Um, Daddy Dom's. I that yeah. was me. I didn't think, uh, but that's nice because you know I'm dominant in every other aspect of my life. So Daddy Dom's a different. You know I'm like oh that's a nice change. A, a gay men. A lot of gay men lesbians but mostly but the gay men are the surprising ones um and yes i figured it out because i'm like masculine enough you know for for that side but i have all the feminine parts so maybe it might be a safer option i don't know or maybe it's just because I'm, I'm crazy and kinky and they know i'm just nasty i don't know i don't know i mean i don't i, I don't kink shame either you know it it is what it is i yes i i love it's so prudent when it comes to sex. Like the whole, the whole, the whole world is like, eh, 
It's sex. It's normal. Whatever. United States is like gonna, talk about Bruno. <laughs> you might you may not like eating booty, but you know there's somebody out there that does it. You can think of it. There's a fetish for everything. Exactly. I and I got on a phone with one of my buddies the other night. He was like looked up different crazy shit. I know what you did, but it's okay. Phone with one of your buddies. <laughs> <laughs> we got to talking about eating booty and he's like moose you eat booty and i'm like yeah he's like what the fuck i'm like i i don't really have a thing for feet but i'll fuck with feet and he's like ooh, yeah they have to be clean i don't i don't uh, uh it's not it's not my thing but whatever as long here's the thing i tell people have an open mind and try everything twice if can and as long as it doesn't vi violate the five hard no's, five hard no's. So piss, shit, uh, vomit, kids, or animals. That's it. If it doesn't include those five hard no's, just whatever. And then if it does, it, one of them, the, there's one of them that's, eh, depends on the situation and the person. There's just a lot of factors in that one. And that's piss. I don't I'll, I'll take four of those away. Yeah, the, the other four is a, I'll leave a, the piss, but the other four can go. Not, not down for scat. I'm sorry. Fuck that I'm shit. The fuck a horse, okay? I don't want it. If God no. makes that happen, he would he would make a minotaur. I'm not doing. Or not minotaur. Where the fucking name is that? <laughs> centaur. Centaur. What is a minotaur? Oh, the minotaur is the fucking opposite. Never mind. First two female death match wrestlers. I know. I know. I wasn't the first in the U.S. Um. Because there was another woman, she was a much older lady. She had had, I think I was told she had either nine or ten kids, all natural birth, home births and stuff. She's a badass. Um, and her name was Delilah Starr. And she just come in and these guys would just, like, she just take cinder blocks to the dome. And, like, she was fucking nuts. Older lady and everything. Um, by the time I had, I had started coming around to IWA, was towards the tail end of her. Um, and then I think she she had to quit because she got hurt really bad. Uh, but as far as the first Canadian and then American, like the more mainstream or the more um, the more matches under their belt in that in that type of match, maybe maybe um, I don't think I've I've met anybody else. Like I've seen I've met other people who other women. Who are much older that have done hardcore matches, but hardcore matches are different than death matches. Yeah, they're, they're very different. Hard, I'm a, it's the easiest way I can explain it is hardcore matches is like dog collar <laughs> match or a t TLC match and you know things that of that nature. Um, death matches are sharp, pointy things, anything that you can get penetrated by, like glass, thumbtacks, bar. Death matches include penetration, the more extreme. That's it's right. like it's like porn and then hardcore porn okay so 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 hardcore you know wrestling is porn and then death matches is the hardcore porn that you watch that you know the german fetish and the yeah yeah this thing is love and yeah good time so uh what is, what is your favorite death match weapon my axes i got my two axes i named them phil and lil after the rugrats I should have known that because that's also your gimmick weapon. I should have known that straight off the bat. I should have known that straight off the bat. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to retire him soon, but I'm trying to get enough funds together to have Masada uh, custom make me two more and two new axes. Hi, he, did he make the other two? Gorgeous. I just gotta get the money together to give it to him so he can get working on it. Did he make the other two? No. Uh, so I found one in Milwaukee at a deathmatch tournament. Uh, me, I was, I, it just kept drawing my attention. It was in the pile of all this shit. They had put all the weapons together for people to claim, and I kept getting, you know, drawn to it. And uh, Pondo was like, "Why don't you just take it?" And I was like, "Well, no, because they put it in the pile. I don't want, you know, if anybody else." And so Pondo walked over, picked it up, and put it in my bag. He's like, "Take it." So I took it, um, and then I started using that. And when I got to Jersey about a month later, somebody said that they saw me with with that one and that they found one they had one that looked like it, it was just a, a taller skinnier version and when they like one's like a throwing axe the other one's like a melee axe and Fuck so yeah. so the one that's like skinnier at the top and longer 
her name is Lil, and then the one that's fat is Phil. So Phil and Lil. <laughs> oh, I like it. So, uh, is there anyone you would like to call out? I know some of the elites you want, like Nick Gage, June Kasai, Alex Cologne, Pagano, Atticus Kogar, Murdoch, Vixen. Uh, Murdoch's too scared of me. Oh, fuck. One of my favorite male deathmatch wrestlers, and I have an interview with him coming up. Fuck. Now I question your ability and taste in class, my friend, because no. Oh, you just shoot on Murdoch. Oh, my God. Oh, my fucking God. Y'all have to have history. What's the history? He should be. Anyways, what? What's y'all's history? You got history with Murdoch? Let's just say he knows that I know, but he doesn't want me to know what I know. And when when I see him, it's on site. Oh, you don't. You don't want to fight me, okay? That's your choice. Mm. It's okay. He's not the first man I've ever scared. I get men all the time say, "I don't want a wrestler; she'll hurt me." I was like, "Okay, you're not gonna be my friend because I fight my friends. If I fight my friends, what do I do? People I don't like. I'm gonna have to bring that up. Tell Murdoch. <laughs> right ahead. Right ahead. I'm, I want to see it. I want to see it. I don't know. I, I'm gonna have to go with that Mickey though. I, I, I don't know. I'm torn. I'm torn. Calling him out for years. Calling him out for years. And he can get all these other matches. Why does he why does he want one with me? Why wouldn't exactly. he? Want me? Why would he take you? It's like he's done he's it it looks like he's dancing around the issue, doesn't it? Because I ain't scared. I, I mean fuck he took the damn he split his shoulder in deep south. He fucking went against just about it, He's scared a little. He's went against Big big names. No offense, but I mean he's been to Japan and faced like the Kata and shit. I can't explain it. I guess I'm just that dangerous. What what the fuck? What the fuck? It sounds like a problem in the pants department. <laughs> oh god. Oh gonna fight me and we'll see where that goes. That'll be Oh yeah. fuck. Oh, he may fuck. kick my ass. He may kick my ass. He may knock me the fuck out. But I'm gonna tattoo my name right on his fucking soul. Ooh. He's gonna walk away with a piece of me in his life forever. Constant reminder. Uh, if we can get this to happen, where would it happen? At considering, I don't think Murdoch will work for XPW. I'm not for sure though. I don't want him. So we'd have to figure out somewhere to set it up. Yeah. Oh, um, where is where is he still working that he hasn't bitched or complained about? GCW. Yeah, yeah, I can see that happening there. Don't get me started. If it happens, no. I don't know what other company won't listen to their own people when they stay right in front of him. Like Nick Gage told Brett Lauderdale, Mickey Knuckles is on my bucket list. Right to fucking Brett Lauderdale. So I don't think that would happen. Brett Lauderdale actually watches this channel, so. Good. I have no problem with Brett, but I'm saying. So in your. That's not enough of a motivation to bring me in. That that one of your people that is your top people, that you, your foundation of people for that company says that he wants to work with me. I'm on his bucket list. I think you'd want to give him what the man wants if he's giving everything to you. Just saying. Uh, you're talking about some ticket sales. I mean, you're the promoter, but. It's not. Maybe it's bad business. If it's bad business, then, you know, I'm just an asshole. It's okay. Ignore what I say. Bad business, though. <laughs> Fuck. What's worse? Well, he beat, he's going to be beat my ass. That's, that's, that's awesome. That's what everybody comes out to see. Let's see how much ass beating she could take. Oh, I could take it all. I kind of like some of it. It's cool. In your opinion, what was the biggest match of your career? Um, Jesus. So uh, before this past weekend, probably when you said Sadika, and Lefisto, but this past weekend, the three-way I had with 
Joel Bateman and Lou um, Nixon. That's probably been one of my, maybe not biggest on the scale of like the attendance record. Cause I mean, it was in a small club thing or whatever, but like the biggest as in the, the match I walked away with like the best feeling from in a long time. Like that match, that match made me want to, want to keep coming back to wrestling. Like that's, that's why I still do it. It's things like that. And that match was just so much fucking fun and awesome. And I uh, got, I got to work with fucking Lou Nixon and Joel Bateman, who, you know, none, neither uh, any of us had ever worked together before. It was all first for all of us. And we had such a great time, you know, and I made some new friends. So what show sure. was that? That was, oh, my God, I'm such a terrible person. If I could get into my phone, I could tell you it was the Saturday night midnight or it, the show started at 11, 11 or midnight. Um, and it was at the photo club. Might have been the New Fear City one. The what? The New Fear City. I don't know. That sounds familiar. Then I have no clue. I don't even. I don't even think I seen any flyers for you. The headshots <laughs> this past weekend. So I'm not gonna have the best memory with things. But yes, um, I'll get you the name of it. But it was that Saturday night show. I know it was Dave. Um, but yeah, I'll get you the name of it so we can push that. But that was probably. My favorite. Give me so. one second. I think my little one woke up. I don't know why I do the things I do. Hello. Sorry about that. She woke up. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, I don't know why I do the things I do, but whatever. It's there. Yeah. My little girl woke up. Sorry. <laughs> she watches death. She watches death match wrestling. She's a <laughs> raise me a look. Well, my son thinks she is a death match wrestler. And then I'm a ex- women like you. And she watches Tara Calloway. She watched Pondo. Not all of them, all of y'all just aspire. Um, could we see you back in IWA Deep South for a Carnage Cup? If they bring me in, I don't care. I'm going to have to talk to Captain. All right. What is your hobbies out of the ring? I work a lot. I have two other jobs beside wrestling. So, all together, I have three jobs and three kids. So, okay. I don't really have time. Um, I'm, I'm starting, I'm working on this new podcast now. It's called uh, sex talk with aunt Mickey. Uh, cause I'm, I'm pretty crude and crass person. So whatever I'm the aunt that everybody wants to invite to barbecues. Cause they know I'm going to show up drunk and do some funny ass shit. So yeah. Tiffany, which is my soulmate. She just doesn't know it yet. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, I like going karaoke. I have three dogs two cats that I rescued and a rabbit. So I like to play with them. Yeah. And most of the time I just really like sleep because I don't get enough of it. Between driving to shows, going to work, typing up legal documents, things like that. And then playing with the kids and looking at everything. Yeah. We're good. (laughs) I feel that. What is a dream death match for you? I'd want to do something like the the King's Mountain type of death match where I would have to go through different levels and just survive. Like it's it's you different participants and if you can make it either to the time marker or pin them, you move on to the next level. And it, like it's usually like four or five levels. I think I don't remember, but like I want five levels. Um, oh yeah. I'd want. Moxley, oh. Kasai, oh, um, God, there's so many. <laughs> okay, uh, Jesus, leave anybody out. 
at least at least those two but then the other three i don't I feel bad i'm taking your time i'm sitting over here snapping at my dog yeah i, I don't know I'd, I'd want necro in there because i would be an awesome time um yeah i i have quite a few but like at least those three and then have that go through a gauntlet where i, I have to either survive 10 minutes with them or pin them oh or maybe shit. survive 15 minutes so that it would be uh, five segment is 15 minutes a piece at the most. Fuck yes. And having five matches back to back to back to back to back. I think, yes. if I, I think if I could do that, that I would just, that would just be the, the ultimate pinnacle of, of anything else I can do in this business is that. So, but you know, the, the, the first few names I mentioned is a lot of money. <laughs> well, not, yeah, these amount of money. So. It's not going to happen, but that's what I would like is to go through a gauntlet. I want to just blood in, blood out, bitch. I'm just trying Thank to you. prove. I just want somebody to one day say, hey, she's one of my like favorite wrestlers. Or I really like her as a wrestler or a deathmatch wrestler. Just not, you know, not just a female wrestler. I just want to be equal. If you're wanting to be truly equal in anything, you got to take the good and the bad. Guess what? The bad is sometimes you got to get your ass beat a lot. But if you fight against it and keep persevering and keep fighting against it and you do something with it, then you've earned your scars. And that's all I want to do. I mean, if I had my partner on here, which, and uh, if he was here, he'd tell you, he'd be like, oh, Moose loves Aunt Mickey. You're his favorite. You're his top. And I'm like, do this interview. Well, I appreciate um, your, your appreciation. You're welcome. Is there an up and coming up and coming major female deathmatch wrestler that you have your eye on? Angel Metro. Not too familiar with that one. You will be. You will be. Oh, uh, Mickey Knuckles training a girl. I can't wait to get my hands on her in a ring. That's gonna be a good thing. Yes, I'm gonna have to get get that video when it comes out. So, um, what's your thoughts on the gusset plates, considering they stick anywhere and every fucking where's on your body? I can't really see. I see. That's all I do. Jesus. Gus they're awesome. I like gusset plates. I'll use them. Happy. Jesus. Death Fuck they're not normal people. It's not meant for you all, but it's fine with us. We'll deal with it. There's a lot of people who don't like them. I'm okay with them. I'd rather exactly. use some light tubes sometimes, but you know. That's, I took a light tube and, uh, <laughs> yeah, well. Um, I actually wrote that question because I was sitting there and I was like, um, I can't remember who your space was, but they had you on the ropes and you, you had gusset like right here on your right here and the one in your head and I'm like I gotta ask her how the fuck she felt about him because they always love sticking gussets to you mm -hmm. I'm a pin cushion that's my job I'm a punching bag pin cushion what was your thoughts when Bobby Beverly put you through the flaming contraption at TOD 19 I, I was knocked the fuck out I didn't have a damn thought in my brain <laughs> seriously <laughs> the board because it was a no no mat like they, they completely cleared out the mat so the boards were those fucking stupid fucking boards and the one popped up and smacked me in the back so it was like getting donkey punched as i landed i was out oh shit for a good five minutes the paramedics had to get in the ring and, and try to and then they said i just jumped up like nothing happened it was had a smile face it was like thank you everybody i was like i don't remember yeah. nothing if you watch it you can see you get well, you can't see that you get knocked the fuck out, but you can see like you're laying there and like everybody swims in and then you just get up and like Thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks everybody. Bye. Yep. So how was it facing LaFisa though? I love her. I love working with her. With the the first death match we did was just we were so exhausted because we had wrestled so many matches. We went through a whole tournament to the end. And we were bloody, exhausted. We had just minutes before we went out. I couldn't understand a fucking thing she was saying because she has that, that thick French-Canadian accent at that time. And and when I get really tired and and, and worn out, my, my country accent comes out really bad. And so we couldn't understand the fuck each other were saying. We're like, we'll figure it out. 
So the whole match was just a walking talk, you know, beautiful dance. And it went as it went. And afterwards, I remember us being back there exhausted. We were the only two back in the locker room because everybody went out to either clean up or meet with the fans and shit. And we were just started laughing. We're like, that was pretty fun for being as tired as we fucking were. Bath, a bath hurt that night. The showers hurt that night. <laughs> but it was a fun time. And every, we've always had great chemistry, either whether a death match or a regular match. It just seems like she brings out the best in me when it comes to wrestling. She pushes people past their limitations and they end up liking it. And so it makes them better. Yeah, I think we all like that at ICW when you and her went at it. Y'all can fucking woo. Um, what is your death match go as of right now? Or do you have one? I want to try to wrestle as many of the top tier death match people, men, women, doesn't matter, on their own turf in their own countries. Oh, fuck yes. Because like like I said, I'm trying to earn trying to earn a spot at the big boys table. I'm trying anyways. Um and in order to do that, you gotta go through the big boys. So why not do it on their own home turf where they have home field advantage? And exactly. then that at least I know if I'm if I'm worth the salt that I'm made with, you know. How was it tagging with Cruel considering you've tagged with him plus you fought him? You mean when we tagged in Loco? Yeah, when you tagged in Loco, but you also fought him a couple of times in like ICW and yeah. stuff. The, the, the tag match was so fun because the way our characters are, it's an opposite dynamic to where I'm so out outspoken and, and <laughs> out there. And he's like this serial killer or just quiet, you know, whatever. So the dynamic was just, it, it felt <laughs> great to have somebody else that could counteract that energy on, on my level and even make me crack up laughing. Because I, I always do a match where I... I try to make my opponent and the and the the referee and everybody ring crew at least laugh three times. I just like making people. <laughs> so, you know, I made him laugh quite a few times when we did that big schmosh thing uh, with me, Sadika, him, and and Schlack. And then when we did the tag thing, I was like, I'm gonna make you laugh again. He's like, Not this time. I've got you. So we went out there. Of course, I had him cracking up laughing while I was cutting the promos and stuff. And then. <laughs> smacking me he he smacked me so hard on my ass i had to double think what i was getting ready to do next i was like oh, we fucking are fighting buddy because i don't know that's a big ass mountain but i'll climb it <laughs> yeah but yeah uh, no it was a great time i loved it it was perfect dynamic it was just so opposite just and it meshed together beautifully it's yeah fuck yes who gave the godmother of death my trust to run for our money Masha. Masha? Masha. That little oh, girl that little girl put got on her hands and knees with me and put her hands behind her back and said, Let's headbutt. And I said, All right. And kept up tit for tat. Fuck me. So Masha. I like Masha. I thought that she was gonna say like Akira or fucking Necro or uh, Akira I had a fun time with. Um, and it's Akira's. It, 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 that's a different a different song. Masha was somebody that she's already got this. She's a female for one, trying to do the same thing I'm trying to do, and she's a legit badass. And she's got all this other stuff. Like she, you know, she's got the Russia. And, and so Masha. Masha, it, I'm sorry if we get in a fight and I have to choose whether Akira is the person I'm fighting somebody with or Masha. I'm going to say, Akira, go sit your ass down, and then I'm going to have a beer while Masha beats everybody up. So, that's oh, all. fuck. A young, she just shit on another one of my favorites. Yeah, Masha's a legit badass. Like, she, I, I know one day if I get too froggy, she's probably going to sugar the shit out of me. So, it'll be all right. We'll, we'll be, still be friends afterwards. Fuck yeah. You got to fight your friends every once in a while. As that, much as you can. Who is your biggest rival besides Ian Rotten? Ian's not even a rival. You have to you have to be 
in the same game to be a rival. Oh, that's true, too. I I, mean, it's, it's true. He's not wrestling anymore. I am. And he did whatever he wanted with his life. And I'm a different beat. Um, I need to be quiet because I'm more shit all over Ian and we don't need that. So, nope. I learned a long time ago. People are going to be shitty to you, but karma's going to be shitty to them. So why? Why? Cloud up my space and energy with their negativity. I definitely got to hear who's your biggest rival. Though. Biggest rival right now is Dread. He's pissing me the fuck off. Dread and Cat. They're both pissing me the fuck off. I should have known Dread. Yeah, Dread and Cat. They're both pissing me the fuck off. Oh, shit. It'll be all right. We'll be taking oh, care of Can't wait to see if she shows her ass up in, in Cali this Saturday. That'll be interesting. Rob needs so to is, stay home. Fuck yeah, I'd like to see you and Kent Martini go at it again. What, is she, she going to claw me to death? <laughs> I mean, you, you, you had chemistry, well, not really much, but you had chemistry with Sage Sin, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I love Sage. You, you want to hear a fact. There's four girls. That all new Necro Butcher from the age of 17 up. Sorry, Randy West. So Randy West, Sage Sin, Ladark, and me, all since we're 17, were all deathmatch female wrestlers. Damn. I think it's a conspiracy, but nobody told me what my part is in it yet. I'm waiting for the Illuminati to hit me up and let me know. But anyway. Woo! So is there anything you, you would like to say, tell, or speak on about Ian Rotten, considering y'all have such a long history? You ain't going to like this book. I'm definitely going to buy it. Cause, well, uh, somebody once told me if they didn't want me to speak bad about what they did to me, they shouldn't have been a shitty person to me. Thank you. I live by that. Honestly, I know some. Oh, I don't. I, I'm be the only one not happy by the book. I'm sure my ex husband would be furious about this book, too. It'll be all right. You'll live. I'll clip it if you don't want me to keep it in the video, but can you date Ian Rotten? God fucking no. I'm going to murder people. You all really believe the shit that comes out of that man's mouth, don't you? Really? No. I, really? I, I, I heard really? it. And I, I was like. I will tell you who I've dated in this wrestling business, if you'd like to know. C.J. Otis, who was Sabu's tra trainee. Michael Elgin, when he first started working for IWA. My ex-husband. Those are the only three people in this wrestling business I've ever dated. Never fucking dated Ian Rotten a day in my fucking life. As a matter of fact, him and his wife would tell people I was like their daughter. The whole dynamic was I grew I didn't have a dad growing up anyways. That didn't replace my family factor that I'd been missing. I moved in with them. I ate, slept, bled, breathed IWA. Anything that had to do with it, I, that I was there. I was devoted, and I was in that fucking that cult mindset of this is it. This is end all be all. Then, because I wouldn't come back and work for him anymore, he wants to spread rumors and lies and tell and tell promoters wives don't let your husband book her because she'll fuck him. And yeah, and try to get me blackballed. Thank God for Tracy Smothers. Actually, I was ready to walk away from the wrestling business. Tracy Smothers is the one that dragged me back in. Thank God for <laughs> peace and your death. I, but yeah, yeah, because there's a, a video on YouTube. Yeah. I'll have to find oh. it. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yep. I was like, I was like, no, I don't think. I, I was like. I'm just going to, I tried to keep my mouth shut about it, try to just walk away and hopefully whatever, he'll just lose interest, but it's like he just can't let go of shit. So fuck him. I'm Can done. I, talk? I'm, I reached 40 this year. I turned 40 in May and I'm at that stage of my life where the first half of my life has been devoted to other people's feelings, wants, needs, everything, you know, devoted to other people sucking the energy out of me. I'm done. I'm at a fucking stage. I only have to worry about me and my children. That's fucking it. Everybody else, I love y'all, but any fucking, I, I can't, I can't help you. I don't have any energy to give you unless you're going to give me energy back. I'm sorry. Exactly. It's a center here. I don't just give free energy out anymore. We have to fucking exchange energy. Otherwise, I'm going with. So. Yeah, because like 
I met, I talked to Squirrel, and I was like, you heard this shit? And then we got to talking about it, and I was like, Brian, he was like, I uh, don't think it's true, but, you know, you might want to ask her. And I was like, no, she fucking ne-. I was like, when I was good, at least, and not when I was living in their house. Anyway. I was like, man, whoever started this shit, I was like, they need to be punched in their mouth. Because it was like, you done this with thing, you done that with thing, And I'm like, no. <laughs> you exactly who I dated in this business. There you go. That's who I dated. I can clip it if you want me to, but fuck no, me. It. Uh, no, what people. Like I said, people ain't going to like this book. But it's my therapy. It's not it's not about them. It's about me and about trying to maybe give out some red flag signals so other people aren't as stupid or vulnerable or naive and gullible as I am. You know? Okay, so this I make everybody on their word and believe that people are good people no matter how much shit I've been through. And then, I, you know, people get hurt. So maybe if I can help to where other people don't have to do that, then it'll serve a purpose and it's therapeutic. I get it out there. I'm done with it. I don't have to deal with it anymore. I, I, I write up, you know, everything myself. I send it into the editors and stuff, let them review it, you know, tell me you know, their critiques and stuff. But for them, like I'm, I'm the one telling this history. It goes from the day I was born all the way up. And there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be mad, but they can just, that's, they need to go talk to somebody else about that. Cause I don't really care. Now, when you they, drop your book, where would you be selling it at? Uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> That's not, that is not my department. <laughs> my department is try to remember shit. That's all <laughs> that I have to do right now. Um, but it, it'll be towards the end of the summer when it's finally released. Oh, yes. I'm going to need one. Definitely. Yeah. So I might, people are going to probably hate me. People will probably not hate me. I, uh, if they hate me, that's their right to hate me. But we don't have to hate each other and actively want and wish ill will on each other. We can just walk away and not have to deal with each other. Um, it's true. That's the whole beauty of this world. It's big enough to where I can just walk that way. Uh, so, in your opinion, what's your bloodiest match? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I've, I've, I've bled plenty of matches, <laughs> a lot. I'm surprised to stop bloody and left. Uh, but no, I, I'm not sure which one's the bloodiest, to be honest. Um, I know there was quite a few times that when Ian would give me a chair shot, he would clip me in the back of the head here and the, with the, um, the lip of the chair and yeah. we would pack it, would drag it with it. So it would like scalp me a little bit back here. Um, and that bled pretty good down. Like it would just pour down, but. I'm not really sure what my bloody match is. I think it was you and Tank and uh, King of the Death matches. I got that question because I mean, like, oh, oh my yeah. god, I mean, good. I, I, there's so many matches, and I was like, you know what? I can't even, I can't even fucking find the one of her bloodiest. They're all bloody. Maybe she can tell me one straight off the bat. No, no, not at all. There's been so, a lot of, but, um. What's your favorite country you've ever wrestled in? Mexico, I had a blast, but that's because I hung out with Ladark and Pagano. I really haven't done a whole, whole lot of other countries. I've been to England, been to Germany, um, but that's pretty much the extent of it. That's what I'm working on this next year. So, so what would, where would you like to go country-wise? Everywhere. Everywhere. Japan? Everywhere. Everywhere. Fuck yeah. Zealand, Australia, England, Ireland, Scotland, Russia. I don't care. I just want to go everywhere. Everywhere. Need to get, need to see you over in bleeding guns. <laughs> be awesome. What was it like being in the finals of TOD in both years? Frustrating. 19 and 20. Frustrating. Really? King frustrating. Like, it's like, it's like a girl promising you a blowjob for three months on this one specific date. And the date comes, she's got a headache. See what I'm saying? Frustrating. 
Got me there. Uh, I respect right. that. Uh, 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 uh. Like I keep, I keep grinding and, and shit, and I just, I just fucking can't. I just can't close that, and it's fucking, it's just frustrating. It's really frustrating to me. I'm trying. I really try, and if I can't succeed, like I'm being serious, I, I really think, like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure, 100 percent that if I can't pull the win on TOD this year, I'm done with death matches. This year? Yeah. Ah, uh, come on. Yeah. Uh, fuck, DJ, I need you. We need, we need you to win. Come on. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, whose gimmick weapon would you say hurts the worst? Remington roars. Remington roars, really? He's got those great big blades. Is that machete? Yeah. His, oh. Yeah, because it's a, it's a it's a thin slice. The the jagged ones reach in and tear. The thin slicers, you know, I mean, it hurts, but it's it's like it's not as much surface damage. The jagged ones are, are there to just mutilate. The slicers, right. they're brutal, like just to you. So. Well, that's all my questions, and I thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you for having me on. You're welcome. Anytime. Anytime. I've only had, uh, including this morning when I got here, I got taken out before work. So I've only had like seven hours of sleep in the last seven to eight days. Jesus. 